Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I, before we get into the video for this week, which is going to be some minerals, uh, I just wanted to come on and, and uh, let you know kind of what I'm thinking for the future. So I know I haven't been outside uh, very much recently, and that's because it's been really busy around here, what with uh, things having to get done around the house and uh, Thanksgiving and the holidays and uh, things like that. And I did put up a video of uh, cleaning up the yard a little bit and setting up some Christmas lights and those kinds of things. But haven't been out looking at any outcrop or any rock or anything like that recently. So we are uh, entering into the Christmas season. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, and again, I thanks for watching this channel. But uh, here at the end of this week, Briggs is uh, finished with his school for two weeks. And uh, during that two week break, I plan on getting the both of us out and doing some filming that we can uh, do some outdoor activity. It just snowed this week. Uh, we had eight inches here at the house. It had about four or five in town. Uh, up in the hills, I'm not sure, not sure what the totals were, but uh, it's, it's nice today. It's gonna be in the 50s today. Tomorrow it's supposed to be 60, but that's here in Rapid City. So uh, hopefully there'll be some snow still up in the, uh, the Black Hills when we get out there here uh, next week. Uh, the second thing is is that I uh, have some hats in and I'm working on a logo. If you've noticed the end tail to most of these videos, uh, it says pterodactyl wear and there's a specific reason behind that name. And so the first logo that I'm designing is a, in fact I got a picture of it right here, so don't you know, ignore the lettering, but uh, there's a, a pterodactyl so I've, I've drawn that and I'm getting that into uh, the condition that is required for an input file to a laser cutter. And then we're gonna put those on uh, a leather uh, patch, you know, something like this, that then gets stuck on the, not this big though, this is a coffee holder, but uh, a, a round circular leather uh, cut out with laser cut on it for that pterodactyl. And, get them put on a hat and then I'm uh, making up another logo that's going to be Rock and Dr. Rocks. I have a Facebook page for uh, this uh, YouTube channel and it's called Do Rock and Dr. Rocks and so if you haven't seen that on Facebook you should be able to look that up. Uh, I'm not sure really how Facebook works. You might have to go to my personal page and get it from there. It should just look up as Rock and Dr. Rocks. Uh, and and that's where I'm planning on uh, having these hats uh, for sale. Any regard, thanks for watching. Uh, let's get to the minerals today, which are uh, uh, native elements. And we're going to look at some copper and we're going to look at gold from the Homestake mine. Please comment uh, if, if you like this. As always, thanks for watching. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome everyone uh, to the mineral portion. Today we're going to look at copper and gold, both native elements. Uh, copper is uh, Cu, uh, gold is Au. Okay, copper is again native element uh, in crystal form. It usually occurs as isometric crystals, that's its habit, and uh, hexa octahedral forms, or more likely it is in what are called uh, Hackley masses, and that's what this sample is that you're seeing here, and you can uh, see the edges. Here's a wire, kind of a wire coming off, and this is native copper. There's a lot of uh, uh, other uh, uh, gang mineral uh, that's just non-ore minerals, and so of course if this is processed for ore, it would be uh, melted down. All of the uh, gang minerals would be stripped off of here, and uh, copper would be uh, produced. So copper is uh, very malleable and ductile, uh, has a low hardness, has a high specific gravity. Uh, it's an excellent conductor of electricity and heat. And of course, uh, you know that it's in uh, wires and uh, electrical wires and it's uh, in plumbing for uh, you know, water because it doesn't interact with the water. And so it keeps water uh, pure with copper lines. Uh, copper is found in the Black Hills. There's a few locations where it is uh, found. 
Uh, don't know if there's much of this native copper, but there are some. Lawrence County has some reported uh, with black graphitic uh, schists. Uh, other than that, it is um, uh, not mined in the Black Hills. Okay, gold, uh, AU, also a native element. It is isometric, uh, hexaoctahedral crystals as well. And I believe toward the end, I'm going to zoom in on this guy right here, kind of on the left side of this. And, um, and it's, you can see that it's kind of squarish, so it's as close to a crystal form in this mass as I can uh, get. This sample is from the Homestake Mine, which is probably the, one of the most uh, famous localities for gold in the Western Hemisphere, and it is a, it is a world-class deposit, uh, now closed. Uh, through the life of that mine, they produce some 44 million ounces of gold in 100, what, 126 years or something like that. Uh, this all metal is also uh, malleable and ductile. It means it can be shaped. It's drawn into wires. And, of course, uh, gold is a, is a very important mineral in semiconductor industry. Uh, your telephone, you know, your cell phone, uh, all of electronics, your computers, uh, the end tabs are coated with a fine uh, plate of gold and in many ways is, is like a lot of rare earth elements and, and native elements we wouldn't have our, our modern technological society without these uh, metals. So they are uh, important. Gold is very common throughout the Black Hills. Uh, it's in uh, vein quartz and that's what you see here is quartz. Uh, on the outside of this, this, this uh, gold that's kind of disseminated through it. Uh, this is not what you would typically expect to see uh, from a deposit at the Homestake Mine, uh, although this is from the mine, and, there, and this is free gold, so you can actually see it. And there is a uh, free gold there, and, and I've seen several uh, beautiful samples of that. Uh, but uh, typically, it was finely disseminated in the, uh, the uh, meta sediments that are in the mine, and you couldn't see it. It had to be processed out. Uh, so in that regard, this is kind of a, a rare specimen. Uh, this is very, very small, so in case you get any ideas that this is a lot of gold here, uh, the width of this uh, mineral right here might be between one and a half and two uh, millimeters. So it's very small, but uh, uh, now as I zoom in, it's very hard to zoom in on this because it is so small. Uh, you know, you breathe and, and, the, and the camera jiggles and wiggles. So I tried to take out the wigglies and uh, so you can get in here and, and look at this sample. Uh, so I hope it's uh, clear enough for you to, uh, to see. So uh, Homestake Mine obviously has gold. There's many, many other locations around the Black Hills, uh, many other gold mines that mine gold specifically. And in fact, there's still one active gold mine in the northern Black Hills at the foot of Terry Peak, uh, the Wharf Gold Mine, and they're mining uh, the gold out of the Cambrian Deadwood Formation uh, uh, still today. The Homestake Mine has been shut down since 2001. So here's kind of that little uh, appendage, a little fine filament of gold. You can kind of see a little square on here. And I, I just zoomed into the background here. You can see the gold vein running down through the quartz in here. But uh, uh, so very, very beautiful uh, sample. Again, this is not very much, but it gives you an idea how uh, gold occurrences uh, appeared. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see ya.